These are some new, new Rich Campbell court docs. I mean, I had them for a while, but I'm I'm editing that XQC video. Like, where's the XQC video? They If you don't remember, Azalea Lexi, she did put out the tweet longer alleging that Rich Campbell graped her. This was a year ago, December 16th. He put out this statement saying that, hey, he's aware of the allegations. He's resigning from OTK. But turns out when he filed his defamation lawsuit against her, we realized that this statement was not written by him, according to him and his legal fees and his court filing. Now, she would go on to sue him for S.A., in the state of California, according to her, he graped her while she was drunk at his place in New York. Uh, so the first cause of action is SA. The second cause of action is battery. And the third cause of action is intentional infliction of emotional distress. Now, he would sue her for defamation and she would respond with 18 reasons, right? 18 reasons why she is not responsible for his financial loss. And they do have a conference date set for June 24th, 2024. And most notably, one of the, the biggest ones that in my takeaway, where she basically said, hey, your losses are the result of third parties. Meaning like, hey, I didn't cause your financial loss. It was third parties. You can argue it was OTK. It could have been uh, sponsors who pulled their sponsorship again. But she is saying, hey, any losses that you experience are either your fault or some other third party's fault. And she left, she put in 18 of these and you can make one of it. Now, as a result, he had to respond to her law suit. OK, this is him responding to her lawsuit of grape of S.A. and battery and intentional infliction of emotional distress. And it's going to look pretty similar to hers, but there's going to be one main difference and it comes right out the gate. So as you see, hey, he's on she's accusing him of S.A. battery and intentional infliction of emotional distress. He comes out, hey, it's a general denial. OK, Rich Campbell denies each and every allegation of the cross complaint and further denies the cross complaint is entitled to any relief whatsoever against him or that the cross complaint has been damaged as alleged or in any other sum or all or at all. So basically he's saying, look, I did not do any of these things to her. All right. So that's what you need to take away right there from this top part. Now, what is his defenses? OK, now I looked up all this stuff, but then again, I am not a lawyer. You can fact check me and look it up for yourself. But he put in 30 some odd defenses, guys, 30. She did 18. He set out 30. OK, the first one is interesting. He says, hey, uh, failure to state a cause of action, saying basically she has no case. It's her word on trial with zero physical evidence that I mean, that's a truthful statement at that's this point. That's a truthful statement. That I mean, we only have to I only can go by what uh, was in the court docs. All right. Secondly, hey, she consented. The intercourse was consensual. So because it was consensual and it centers around her lawsuit centers around it not being consensual, he's saying, hey, it was consensual. It was actually good to see that, you know, um, he's st he's sticking to I'm um, innocent in his defense. Uh, the third one, insufficient evidence because it's literally just her word. And, you know, maybe back in the day, it was enough for a, a woman to come forward and say, hey, this person great me and they didn't. And maybe they'll go to jail based on her word. That, I think that is, I think that is going, is going. The believe all women thing is, is kind of going to the wayside. We really need some proof these days. I mean, you got Diddy, but there's, that videotape came out as damaging. Now, the fourth one, statute of limitations, okay? <laughs> statute of limitations. Now, I don't like that he put this in there, but I looked up the code and she has 10 years since the event or three years after she discovered she was injured. So it is well within the statute of limitations. We don't have to read all of these. <laughs> Estoppel just means she's changing her story. Unclean hands. She's not innocent. Latches. This means she's unreasonably delayed her lawsuit, which 
in my opinion, it is retaliatory to the defamation claim. But, you know, how do you guys interpret it? I don't know. I see people stand with Rich 100%. Hello, fam. So, like, people are like, no, I stand with Rich. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, failure to mitigate. She did not help her cause. I mean, this is all legalese, guys. This is throwing everything at the board to see what sticks. I implore you to go do your due diligence and look these up for yourself because these are my interpretations, even though I did look up most of these. <laughs> I looked up pretty much all of these. Tenth, excuse the acts or omissions of cross complaint excused any alleged act or alleged failure to act on part of the cross defendant. He's asking to be excused. Uh, he believe <laughs> um, discharge, believe his recollection of events over hers. So he wants to be discharged based on his recollection of the events. Now, if he, that roommate comes for it, I don't know how much weight you would give a roommate of him. He is, but it is a witness nonetheless should it take it that far supersede and intervening causes her damages were beyond his control you see but this is what this is something i don't like that he did 13th offset set off i do not like this i do not like that he put this in here to the extent cross defendant is liable for any damages to cross complainant cross defendant is entitled to an offset or a set off against any such damages as in they both damaged each other now this is something she put in his but if i'm him i don't i don't like this in there i don't like it in there it just it just sends the wrong message to me that he may have done something wrong so that's that's where it goes for me to the extent cross defendant uh no damage did she benefit from her um accusation in order you know i don't know i i can't track of subscriptions i don't know He's saying she was not damaged. Did she gain some clout from it? Probably. Did she gain more Twitter Twitter followers? Absolutely. You're always going to gain some, some sympathy, people. Good faith. The cross-complainant in each and every cause of action stated therein is barred because cross-defendants' alleged actions were formed in good faith. So he's like, hey, I've acted in good faith. However, if you acted in good faith, that offset set-off shit which one is it? Did you act in good faith, Rich? Or is there some offset set off? Look, man, I'm not a lawyer. I don't like I don't like these conflicting defenses in there. I just don't like it. Actions of others. Kind of like the same thing that she was saying. Hey, the damages that she sustained were by the actions of others. I'm just like, I don't know by who. Um, but he's gonna he's gonna do something a little bit later on. He's gonna say something. Uh to me, it took so long for him to respond, was like he only uh, fought it when he found a way to discredit her. Um, I don't know. Look, dude, I don't know what made him wait literally one day before uh, it happened. OK, no exemplary damages. So even though she didn't levy any monetary damages, he's saying, hey, she didn't she didn't suffer financially. So there is no proof of damages offered, but she can always offer them in trial, guys. Uh, no malice insufficient evidence these are all his defenses no damages suffered by cross complaining no actual injury speculative damages fraud Ooh. now this is when you like report something that's true that's not so uh the cross complaint in any cause of action alleged therein is barred because the cross complaint engaged in fraud so he's saying she's lying hmm I don't know. I mean, look, man, this is this is a weird one because it's her word versus his word. So who how can you prove anything if that witness comes for if his witness comes forward or if the person that was previously accused of great by her that's outlined in his original complaint testify? That would be major. That would be major. Uh, were the result a uh, mistake or lack of intent? If any were the result of unavoidable accidents were un unintentional and occurred without any negligence, want of care, default or other breach of duty on part of the cross defendant. I don't I hate that. I just I, look, I get it. You have to put everything in here. But this defense, oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. He mistakenly injured her. Uh, I don't know. Could have been like a, this is me speculating. 
he thought she was consenting, she wasn't consenting, or she removed consent. Maybe at first she was with it, and then she said stop, and he kept going. I don't know. Was not there. Um, comparative fault. Uh, such injury or damages was proximately caused by negligence, reckless, or intentional conduct of others who acted as cross complaints agent, legal counsel, or representatives. So did she get bad information that, hey, you can't sue Rich? And that's why uh, it happened? Certainty. Um, if any are not clearly ascertainable in either their nature or origin. So her do the damages... How can you quantify it? Uh, you think his lawyers are just covering all bases? They probably they likely are 100 percent. They're throwing up like 30 some odd defenses. All right. Um, 20, 28th defense imply comparable indemnity. All right. This is a big one. Cross defendant alleges that in the event that the cross defendant is found in some manner legally liable to cross complaints as a result of the events or occurred in <laughs> occurrences described in the cross complaint that liability will solely be based upon a derivative vicarious or imputed form of liability not resulting from cross defendants own conduct but instead based upon an obligation imposed upon them by law or by conduct of others and as such the legal liability of cross uh, defendant uh, would be approximately caused by acts or omissions of others. Therefore, cross defendant is entitled to recover total and complete indemnity from all of them. In other words, it's not his fault. I looked up this equitable indemnity. It basically Rich is saying, hey, it's not my fault, guys. Unjust enrichment. Sorry. Uh, intentional misrepresentation. He's saying she's misrepresenting all the facts. Uh, contributions she contributed to the results or occurrences described as cross complaint that liability would be solely based upon it's like I can't they keep repeating the same thing but then they switch up the cross complaint would be proximately caused by others or omissions basically it's the same thing written three different ways same thing hey I'm innocent I'm innocent I'm innocent uh, she's lying this is another way of saying she's lying intentional misrepresentation now unjust enrichment saying that if this loss, if she was to win this, she would be unjustly enriched because, hey, um, she got money. She, she, he has money. Uh, comparative fault is putting the blame on the lawyers. Negligence is putting the blame back on her. Uh, so negligence of a third party. Hey, if someone accuses you of grape and you say, hey, this the losses are on the third party. I don't know. Could this be a goddamn template? 36. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Misconduct of a third party. So he's like, hey, uh, let's put it on everyone, like every third party, similar to her. But like she didn't go this deep. Uh, 37th, lack of causation, missing element of her complaint. <laughs> There's a, something missing. Uh, imparsi delectico, equal faults. So they're both at fault. I don't like it both at fault a hey, dude i don't know lack of particularity the two have no contract together reservation the 40th affirmative defense league which this is basically leaves the door open for him to add more defenses so he put up 39 defenses and left the door open and respectfully asked for it to be dismissed with prejudice Ooh with prejudice means that uh, she can never come back. Awarding costs and reasonable attorney fees in favor of him, granting such further different relief. Uh, this is his response to if he graped her. I think uh, the, the thing that stood off the most, I mean, we knew uh, all this fraud stuff uh, was going to come out. Only thing I did not like was the offset. I, I hated this in there. I hated this in there for him because it kind of says, hey, we might have damaged each other, which anyway, <laughs> I love he got the spare defense in there just in case he needs an extra. I mean, a hey, CYA, man, CYA, she coming for your ducats. He's coming for he on his Johnny Depp thing. I don't think it's about the money, whereas her, it's 100 percent about money. So I don't know what you what you guys make of it, but hey, man. 
Shout out to both. Please don't go harass her. But what do you think of Rich Campbell's defense? Now, they do have the hearing set for the 24th, I believe. The 24th of June, which is coming up at 8.30 a.m. And guess what? You know me. <laughs> I'll get you everything. You know what I'm saying? Because it's an... Look, I'll just say. They got a hearing at 8.30 30. Uh, there will be some notes there. I wonder if they'll push them to settlement or if they'll just say, hey, trial date, because he's not messing around when it comes to a trial. Remember, guys, he wants her deposed. Like if you if you guys don't remember, he wants her deposed. There's going to be expert discovery. And this thing, the trial will likely start if it goes that far to uh, December. Right. Yeah. December. But in the meantime, in between time, they could go to mediation, work this shit out. Um, I imagine he want to retract the statement or for him to get the Trevor Bauer treatment where he just goes. He finally goes live and say, hey, I did not grape her. I never did. And now I can finally say it. And everything is everything, because I truly don't think it's about the money for him. I think it's just about him clearing his name. But I could be wrong. I don't know, Rich. I never spoke to Rich. I don't know him, so don't put me in that bucket. But that's a two and a half hour stream.